Over the past week, I've been asked multiple times, Chris, should I catalog my images or is that not even necessary in the later versions of On One Photo Raw 2026? Now, spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you, no, it's not necessary. But let me explain why I've gotten to that point. So let's go ahead and jump into On One and take a look. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and I just want to get you familiar with the navigation of going between my catalogs and the browse module. So on the left pane inside of the browse module here, you have two options. You have the my catalogs and at the top, that's where your catalog folders would be if you had them. Again, I'm not recommending them. You can see I'm not using them. That is the only reason I'm bringing you over to this tab. You could almost forget about this tab because I think that if you have a computer that meets the recommended specifications by on one and you're using the 2025 version or later as of the time of this recording, then you could just forget about using catalog images unless, of course, you wanted that benefit that I talked about earlier with the keyword AI. Now, if I hit browse, you'll notice at the very top here, I have favorites. And this is that organization benefit that many people wanted to use catalog folders before. And that's just because it allows you to click and then you can jump to a folder of images really fast and you don't have to navigate through your local drives. Now, here's the deal. Right now, I don't have any favorited folders to my local hard drive. Everything that's here, with the exception of photos and pictures, those are obviously on my local hard drive that I have favorited, but we're not gonna worry about those today because many people probably don't use those two folders. This folder here is actually linked to my iCloud drive. Again, I'm not gonna go into that today because that's a little bit more specific and advanced. However, let me show you how you can favorite a folder of images that are on your local hard drives. So my crucial photos, that's my editing hard drive. It's an SSD external that's plugged into my MacBook Pro. So what I'm gonna do is hit the plus icon here on under favorites, and it's gonna bring me to my navigation. I'm just gonna come down to the crucial hard drive, scrolled a little too far. I'm gonna click on that hard drive, and then I'm just gonna to navigate to the folder that I want to include in my favorites, which is gonna be the signature edits folder because it's where a lot of my tutorial images come from. So it'll just be nice to click there and access those fast. So I'll double click tutorial images, and then I have my signature edits folder right here. So if I click there and don't do anything else, I'm not double clicking, I'm just gonna click the folder to select it, and then I'm gonna click open. And what on one has done is it's added the link or the path to that folder to my favorites. So if I just jump over, I'm just going to jump to a completely different folder. So that way we can get out of there and I'll come down to here. We'll come to my leaves folder because who doesn't want to look at a bunch of leaves. Now, with that being said, if I'm, navigating around and I'm like, oh man, you know, I need to get back to my signature edits folder. I can come over to favorites. I can click on signature edits raw and boom, I'm back into the working path or wherever I need to go. So that's the first benefit organization. You can have as many favorite folders as you want. I will give you a word of caution. Probably don't put more than eight maybe 10 folders in here because this can get really really long and at that point you'll just end up with a uh, file tree that looks like this now you can use subfolders with the favorites as well so you can see i have a capture one folder inside of my signature edits folder because i do use capture one and i was experimenting with something so i created the capture one folder inside of the signature edits folder so subfolders do work with the favorite option so if that's a way that you like to work then you can definitely do that and keep your images organized that way really easy to get to them so that's the first benefit 
If you're finding value in today's content, smash the like button and consider subscribing. If you want to pick up all one photo raw and save a little bit of money, consider using the coupon code down in the description box below. It is an affiliate coupon. I make a commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra charge to you. It's a win-win for everyone involved. So let's get back into the video. Now, when it comes to jumping between the browse workspace and the edit workspace, that's another reason why people wanted to use cataloged images or why they've been recommended in the past. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on an image, this one right here. And you'll see it takes just a few seconds to open up, but nothing that's catastrophic. Now, if you're one of those people that just wants instant access to your images, then maybe cataloging a file will help you out a little bit more. But for most people, that speed worked just fine. And so I'm good with that. And that's all that I'll say about the speed of jumping between browse and edit. Now, if I press the letter G on my keyboard, you'll see it just brings me right back to the browse module and I'm good to go. Now, for a long time, I would recommend using catalog folders because you can create something known as a smart album. If you're not familiar with that, it's essentially an advanced search feature that categorizes your images based off of parameters that you set. So if you want to see all of the 50 millimeter images or images that you've taken at 50 millimeters, then the smart album would go and look through your library and it would return all of those images. So that way you have access to them. Well, with the new search features that are built into on one photo roll, I don't think that there's a need to have the smart albums anymore because you can just do those searches and then save that as a style. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you're in browse, you already have a lot of tools available to you to search a category or a catalog of image or a, a series of images. Let me say it like that, not a catalog. You have the ability to search a series or folders of images. And that all starts with these selections that you have available to you up here. The one that I'm going to focus on today is metadata, but of course you could use any of these other options. And the reason why I'm going to focus on metadata is because it allows you to really just like drill down into a series of images or a uh, all of the folders that are available to you of images. So the first thing that I recommend you do is you select how you want to search. For me, I want to find all of the images that I've ever taken at 100 millimeters. So I'm going to click on this drop down where it says everything and I'm going to hover over camera and then you'll see that I have a parameter for focal length. And when I click that, it gives me this uh, box here that I can type in. So what I'm telling on one is I want you to go find uh, images at a focal length that is 100 millimeters. So it's not going to give me 99 millimeters and it's not going to give me 101 millimeters. It's only going to give me images at 100 millimeters. Now, at the current moment, it's only searching the photos that are inside of my signature edits folder. And that's not a problem because if you're working inside of a folder and you know that you have a ton of focal lengths or whatever it is that you're searching for, well, you can just filter this by those 100 millimeter images. And here you can see I have a total of five. You get your count down here at the bottom of on one, by the way. Now I want to look across all of my images and not just the images inside of the signature edits folder. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the top where it says search and I'm going to tell on one, I want you to search all known photos. So essentially all of the photos that are linked across these local drives, as well as even the ones that are on your cloud based storages, if you're using that, it's going to search there. Now, you'll notice that you could also limit the search to just your catalog folders, and that could be another reason for selecting a catalog folder. If you don't want it to look through all of your images, you only want it to look through the folders that you specify. But for me, I wanted to look through all of my known photos, so I'm just going to click there. And then on one is going to go out and it's going to look for all of the images 
that have that were shot at 100 millimeter. Now, it takes a minute for the previews to come up because again, I did not catalog the images, but eventually I am going to get those previews. And, you know, I'm not gonna fast forward through this. I'll let that just pop up and there they are. Now I'm getting my previews and I can just scroll through here and you can see all of the images that I've ever photographed at 100 millimeter. And it's telling me that across my entire photo library, I have 1,840 images at 100 millimeters. Now, here's where the power of this comes in. I can save this as a style. To do that, I'm gonna come over to the top right here where it says none. I'm gonna click this drop down, and I'm gonna to come to save new style. Now, I can't save it as a smart album because again, I haven't created those catalog folders. So don't click save new smart album. Instead, click save new style. And then I'm just gonna type in 100 mm images. So now I've saved instructions that on one will use in the future every time that I select this particular search style. Now, earlier, I created one for all of my 50 millimeter images, and that's going to live right up here at the top. You can see I also have one for five star Nikon images, but we're going to go ahead and click the 50 millimeter images and you'll see that it is now returned all of my images at 50 millimeters. And so I no longer need a smart album in order to do this. Now let's talk about keyword AI because I think that that's a feature that gets overlooked inside of On One. Every time I talk to someone about it, people tend to forget that On One can do this. And if you're not familiar, what On One does is it looks at your image and it will come up with AI keywords that you may want to add to your image. It doesn't actually add them to your photo, but it will search or review your image and then generate a few keywords that you can throw onto your photo. So let's go ahead and select this image right here. And you can see I have nothing in the AI keyword section, but more importantly, I don't have any keywords added to the image. So I am going to just type in helmet because the gentleman is wearing a helmet and I'm going to type in typewriter. and then hit comma. So, so far I've only included two keywords on this image. What I can do is select the image and then I can come over here to scan. And what on one is gonna do is it's going to look at this image and it's gonna scan and you can see it's generating keywords for me, but it has not added them to my actual image. It's only suggesting you may wanna add a keyword of clothing. You may want to add a keyword of dirt. So let's just say I want to add those. I'm going to hit this little up arrow and those are going to add into my keyword section. Now, what's cool is I could hit add all and it'll just dump all of those keywords into the metadata of this image, which makes it a lot easier for me to recall later. But more importantly, when I save this image, if I export the image, I should say, I can export it with all of this metadata. This is where this comes in extremely handy. Not only searchability inside of On One, but maybe searchability in other software of the exported images. Now, if in your workflow, you want the AI to continuously check to produce these keywords, then cataloging is probably something you're gonna wanna look into. So those are my reasons why I'm not suggesting to catalog any of your folders anymore. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section below. Are you cataloging your images or are you working similar to what I just suggested? If you're looking for someone to teach you how to use On One Photo Raw, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that can be found in the description box below. If you got questions, leave it in the comment section. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.